here we have another monument. Nineteen thirty-four. Wow. Sea of Ferns. Oh, I'm coming through minding my own business and look what I see. Not bad, huh? I got a Mountain Dew out here. You know, for the record, the girl that spoke of trail magic said that when she was going through the woods, she came across a green cooler and there was a sign on the cooler that said trail magic today at 2 o'clock at the town that I'm going to that's 24 miles away. So maybe there's some truth to what she was saying. Out here. You know, when I'm hiking, I have a, a very formidable repertoire of what I listen to as far as the iPod goes. Um, I got audiobooks, I got music, and I got what's called uh, pod, podcasts. All right. Most of my podcasts come from NPR, StoryCorps. And the stories there are just awesome because it just covers everything. I like to look at it as, as a cornucopia of audible delight. If I just had to package it in a phrase. Anyway, I just got finished listening to this, this, this touching story that just spoke to me. You know what I mean? I mean, it really touched me. So what I'm going to do is pull this video, what I'm talking to you right now, I'm going to pull it, I'm going to separate it. I'm going to put it in the video by itself and use what I'm talking to you as an introductory. And then I'm going to pull the audio because I have my computer with me. I'm going to pull that story, story 135. I'm, sell I'm telling this for me so I'll know where to find it, not for you. But I'm going to pull story 135 out and I'm going to attach it to this video. And I want you to listen to it. And at the end of the day, I'll, I, this has nothing to do with the video. The, the audio but at the end of the day I want this to be a lesson to you because where audible is not free as far as audiobooks go you can download podcasts as well as TED talks as well as stories you know things that you can have on your on your iPod or or mp3 player that's totally free okay so you can go down a trail and you can be inspired you know you can listen to stories of triumph sadness love war dude the whole nine um and before i start babbling real briefly uh in 2012 i had this podcast of a stream of um of uh holocaust stories and i gotta tell you man these people they got up there and i, I have it i mean and you'll find it if you look npr has everything and they were going through telling their stories of the holocaust and it was like i was just hiking through a bubble it's like i look up and it's like you know Two hours pass, I'm standing in front of the shelter, just riveted, you know what I mean? Just listening to the song and you just get, get pulled away, not the song, but the stories. Anyway, I do recommend podcasts, because you can only listen to music for so long. And at some point, you're going to run out of audiobooks. But you can literally download podcasts and just keep it going, keep it going, and enriching your, your hike, your life, and your experiences. Okay, out here. Uh, stay tuned for the podcast. Support for NPR comes from the Principal Financial Group, managing investments and working to help build dreams for more than 130 years. The Principal at DreamAgain.com. 
StoryCorps is made possible through funding from the Atlantic Philanthropies, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and most importantly, through the support of participants and listeners like you nationwide. You can support StoryCorps by visiting our website, storycorps.org. Hi, and welcome to the StoryCorps podcast. My name is Greg Corbin. And there's a Little League baseball field in Charlottesville called Brian Calvin Corbin Field. And I would like to tell the story of how it got its name. Greg came to one of our mobile booths with his wife, Catherine, to tell the story about that ball field and their son, Brian. When Brian was getting ready for his ninth birthday, he said that he would never make it to double digits, meaning 10 years old. We didn't understand that because he was healthy but he did not want to celebrate his birthday. That's when I got worried. I said, okay, we're going to take you in to see somebody. And he was delighted. He loved talking to somebody. It was just fun for him. Well, over the next several months, he said that he wanted to have a belated birthday party. Catherine came home one day, and he was pulling a red wagon down the driveway, and he had his camping gear on there and uh, his toys and teddy bears. Catherine said, Brian, what are you doing? And Brian said, I'm ready to go on my trip. And I said, Brian, I'll be so sad if you leave. And he said, Mom, I have to go. And Catherine said, well, you can't go away because you have your birthday party. And he said, all right. And then the next morning was his party. There were several things he did that we didn't realize till later, but he wrote letters to some of his friends and uh, put a sign on his door. The sign said, Brian's on a trip, don't worry about me. And then the kids came for the party. He didn't want any gifts, but his little girlfriend gave him a kiss, and his boyfriend wrote a song for him. And then it was time for Brian to play Little League. Now, he always was afraid of the ball. He was the littlest kid on the team. But when Brian got there, he was fearless. He was charging after the ground balls and just having the best time. It was his first time up at bat. He got walked to first base. The next little boy hit a triple, and Brian ran around the bases crossed home plate, and he was the happiest little boy you ever saw. He gave me a high five and went into the dugout, and then he collapsed. The coach brought him out, and I'm an anesthesiologist, and I'm, that's what I do is resuscitate people, and then something inside told me he wasn't coming back. As soon as we left the hospital, I thought to myself, that's what he was trying to tell us all that time. Yeah, but... It wasn't in my belief system that something like that could happen. After he died, I went to the ball field to get my car. And it was the most beautiful spring day I've ever seen. The honeysuckle was out, which for that early in the year is very unusual. And there was another Little League game playing when I went back. And I was looking at the other kids playing. And I reached up to wipe a tear from my eye. You know, I had the smell of vomit from when I tried to resuscitate him. And the smell of the vomit combined with the smell of the honeysuckle. And then all of a sudden, everything got very clear. And I had the sense that if I could bring Brian back, it would be for me, not for him, that he had finished. And the unfinished business was just mine. That's the story of how uh, Brian Corbin Field got its name. It was a dumpy field when uh, Brian played, and a month or two later they renovated it. Now when people come and their little kids play Little League and they say, we were playing on this field and it's named Corbin Field. Is that any relation? And then I say, yes. That's Greg and Catherine Corbin remembering their son Brian in Charlottesville, Virginia. To see photos of Brian and the ball field that's named for him, as well as the sign that Brian left on his door the day he died, visit our website, storycorps.org. You can also read the Corbin story in the StoryCorps book, Listening is an Act of Love. This is Michael Garofalo for the StoryCorps podcast. Thanks for listening. It's 11.30, that is 
Eagle's Nest Shelter. I'm not going, but I'm making pretty good time. About three miles an hour. I should hit town about 2.30 out here. That shelter was 15 miles in. And I'm doing pretty good. And as much as I said that, even though that girl was talking about trail magic at two o'clock and I'm not gonna let it affect me, I'm sure it's in the back of my mind because I'm moving. You know what I'm saying? I'm moving. So if I get to this town by two o'clock, 2.30, then that would really be a record time, 24 miles in record time. So I guess it doesn't hurt to have, to have that carrot dangling before you. But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm not gonna be crushed if there's nothing there because I, I still had a good hike, you know what I mean? And I do so love a challenge. And to be honest with you, as much as I hate to say it, I am having fun out here. As I said before, I'm making good time. But while in the midst of it, I'm doing the math. As you can see, I'm not sweating profusely. I'm not out of breath. I'm just moving, okay? What this tells me is that I've reached a point of equilibrium where my mind and my body are at sync. It understands. I know what my limits are and I can set my goals based on the output that I know my body can put out. Notwithstanding, well, terrain, notwithstanding, and as far as clothes, as you can see here, there's a point where you have to start venting and, and like letting up the, you know, rolling up your sleeves, doing this, doing that. And you got to know when these things come. Um, at this point, I don't think there's anything that the trail can throw at me that I can't surmount. I mean, I've already, I already know what's ahead, but at the same time, my body knows. You know, I got that muscle memory. Everything is locked in now. So at this point, it's pretty much a cakewalk from here to Maine, you know. Um, the only thing I have to do now is exercise discipline in, in doing that what I know needs to be done. I mean, it's just that simple. And uh, continue to exercise intelligence, wisdom. Use what I know, you know. Ask questions. Don't be lazy, that kind of thing. And at the end of the day, uh, if water is the most important thing you can do on the trail to uh, aid in your hike, the second most important thing is rest. As you can see, I did four miles yesterday and, and I was not the worst for it. I mean, I took a nap. I, I didn't apologize for it. I did 31 a day before, you know. And so uh, what you're seeing here is is the the fruit of that reward, you know, basically... I can pretty much hop, skip, and jump 24 miles like it ain't nothing, but not because I'm so great and I'm so strong, it's because of rest, okay? Um, as a personal trainer, you learn that, um, that exercise and as far as working your muscles and all that stuff, it's, um, it's uh, what's the word? Basically, it's all strung along. I mean, everything is relative, um, time matters to say that what you do today and what you do tomorrow and what you do the day after that, all of that matters. It's just strings, strings along, it doesn't cut off. So at some point you gotta be aware of the output, what you're doing, how much rest is that's gonna take to recover from and, and this, that, and the other. You know, there's a word for that, but like I said, I'm hiking, my blood's in my body and not in my mind. But by me spelling it out, you still understand and you can follow the thread of what I'm saying. So um, I'm not trying to win any marathons. I'm just going with the flow of it. I'm letting my body work. Um, I'm gonna persist with the exercise regimen under extreme caution, however, because I realize, or what I've learned is that it's helping me, it's actually helping me maintain my weight. You know, keeping that perfect balance in my muscles so that they recover faster. And at the same time, I'm not dropping weight like I, like I was, you know. And I'm not doing every exercise. I'm only doing what's not being worked on. And I'll, I'll tell you, uh, I'm pretty much doing pull-ups and push-ups, okay? I don't really have to touch my core because I got this belt wrapped around my core right now. And every time I move, I'm flexing, all right? So, um, yeah, it's just that simple. Uh, so I feel good right now. 
and there's no reason why I'm sure I can't make this 24 miles in eight hours which would be another record so so yeah out here for the record the word I was looking for was accumulative accumulative to say that hiking the trail and this kind of exercise is accumulative and if you don't get enough exercise event i mean if you don't get enough rest eventually you're going to reach muscle muscle failure without you even knowing it especially without the water and basically you'll you'll begin to, to feel it when let's say you're not hiking but you're sitting in a restaurant or 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 you're just like immobile for a second and when you get up, it's like your muscles just protest. You just feel this, this like, this, this clench. It's almost like, it's almost like cramps, but not one cramp, but just like a whole lot of micro cramps just pulling you, pulling you down. And you're like, wow, I'm tight. What just happened? That those are the warning signs that you're that that, that you're reaching muscle failure. That your body is is um is shutting down. It's 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 the word I used is. Before you start to hike the trail, you're like Gumby, you're like rubber. But as you stay on the trail, your, your, your body starts to harden and you become like Flintstone, you know, rock where your body does not want to yield. You, you lose that buoyancy. And that's what you feel when you find yourself sedentary just for a second when you're not hiking the trail. In 2012, uh, there was a situation where I went to see a movie um, and it was, in, uh, it was in that town, Front Royal, yeah. And the name of the movie was Battleship. I remember it because it sucked and I was mad. But after the movie, I went to get up and I swear to God, I couldn't move. My body was like, I'm not doing, going nowhere. And so I, I tried to push. My legs would not give. And so I sat back down and I was thinking, wow, this is crazy. So I started massaging my legs and little by little... I, I got up, but I, it just it just felt like I was having an out of body experience. Like the legs weren't my own, and and that said a lot. And at the, at the moment, I didn't realize what it was, but I know now what it was. It was just muscle fatigue. You know, I was pushing so much, and and like I said, the mind is stronger than the body. But at, but at the end of the day, the body will win because when you when when you run it out you run it out, you know, and then your mind sits there like, what happened? What happened? Well, your body just took over. So, um, I'm starting to babble, but exercise is accumulative. And the only way to erase that board is rest. And of course, water out here. One more thing, and this is an important point. How do you know when you're not getting enough rest. I know that sounds crazy, but how do you know? Because it's like I told you before, the mind is stronger. You can tell yourself anything and you can push through anything. But to answer that question, you know you're not getting enough rest out here when your rest is, is uh, restless. What do I mean? I mean, you're trying to get comfortable and you can't. You're trying to go to sleep and you're wiggling and you're turning left, you're turning right. You're just restless. It's very eventful. It takes a long time to go to sleep. It takes a long time to, I mean, and you can't stay asleep. And, and what it is, is this. Your, 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 your body rebels against you sleeping. So what happens is you wake up at 3 in the morning and you just want to get up and hike. Because it takes so much effort trying to go to sleep. That's how you know, believe it or not, when your body's fighting you for rest... That's how you know where you're not getting enough rest because your body can't settle, settle down, okay? So when you find yourself with restless nights and you're tossing and turning, you might just want to pull off the trail, get a hotel, and just relax because you're, you're um, um, I don't want to, I don't want to say your circadian rhythm is off because that has nothing to do with it, but there is an equilibrium in your body that's not synced, you know? And so, uh, like I said, you're going to have to go with that rest to, um, to get everything back to normal. Um, I got nothing against zeros. You know what I'm saying? Zeros are expensive, but no one says you can't stop at a shelter and just rest. All right. So if you just have to take a couple days off for whatever reason, you know, do it. Especially if you're restless 
and you can't sleep. You should get, you should sleep like a baby out here because you're exerting so much energy. And I've, I've said several times that I get better sleep on the trail than I do in town because you're so wrapped up in doing all these different things. And <laughs> believe it or not, you're so full that it hurts to, to lay down. But anyway, I'm starting to babble. All right, out here.